Hey guys, so today I am finally doing the speed reviews video that I have been talking about doing for I feel like two months, but I just kept pushing it back because I felt like I needed more time to test things and then I would get something new and then I'd be like, well, I want to include this, so I have to test this and then it would just keep getting pushed back for like two months. But today it is finally happening. I have a just a big pile of products that I've been testing out over the last few months that I wanted to update you on. It's a bit random. I have mostly makeup, a little bit of skincare, a couple of hair care products as well. It's a solid shampoo and conditioner bar that I wanted to review. So just a lot to go through today. I also wanted to say really quick, I do have a giveaway going on over on my Instagram just giving away a bunch of makeup and skincare. There will be two winners and the giveaway will be going on until Tuesday, June 13th, and I'll be announcing winners the following Wednesday. So yeah, my Instagram handle will be on the screen, so go check it out if you're interested, but let's go ahead and get into the speed reviews. First up, I have a sponge that I wanted to share. This is the e.l.f. blending sponge, and I hadn't heard much about this. I know they're more known for like their dark purple sponge, which I have tried before and I did really enjoy that one, but I'd never even like seen or heard about this one. So they call this just the blending sponge. That's the name. And I kind of picked this up in a pinch just at the grocery store. So I didn't have much time to like really consider my options. But I, once I got home, I looked on Ulta to read the reviews and this only has like three stars on Ulta. So I was like, wow, maybe I made the wrong choice. Like maybe this isn't going to be good. A lot of the negative reviews on there were saying that people felt like it soaked up too much product, which isn't that kind of just how all sponges are? Like all sponges are going to soak up some product. So I don't know if those people who just never used a sponge before or if they're trying to use this dry because having your sponge dampened will help just reduce the amount of product that's getting soaked up. But I don't find this sponge to soak up any more product than any other sponge that I've used. I did notice like if you look up close at it, it's it's almost like more porous than other sponges or the, I should say the pores of this sponge are bigger and more visible than other sponges, if that makes sense. But um, I still get a really smooth application with this. I really like the texture. It's very soft and bouncy. And I've washed this probably at least five or six times now since I got it and I don't have any tears in it so far. So it's held up really well. So I'm enjoying the sponge. If you happen to see it and you're in need of a new sponge, I do recommend it. I do think it's more durable than the EcoTools Bio Blender that I normally get. That one does tear pretty easily, but that one is also, you can compost it, whereas this one you would just have to throw away. So that's the downside. But I do think this is a good sponge. It does the job very well and I'm enjoying it. Okay, next I wanted to chat about these cream blush sticks from Milk Makeup. They actually say these are for both lip and cheek here on the label. So I have tried them for both and I have the shades Work and Quickie. So Work is this kind of salmon color, I would say. It's sort of like a cross between a pink and a peach, but a very nice natural shade. I think this shade would work for a lot of different skin tones because it's not overly warm or cool. It's just somewhere in the middle. So I think this would probably work well whether you have a cool undertone or a warm undertone. I think it's just one of those shades that blends into skin well. So that's that shade. And then I also have the shade Quickie, which is more of a berry wine type of color. This shade, it looks really dark in the stick and I was worried that it would look too dark on my skin tone, but you can see it does apply more sheer. And this shade didn't end up being too deep for my fair skin, uh, but I also think it would work well for deeper skin tones because it does, it's, it's a formula that you can build up on itself. But I actually, to my surprise, I don't love this formula. I, I feel I was expecting more because I know these are really popular. I feel like they get a lot of hype, but I found that when I swipe these directly onto my cheeks, it would, it, it's, it's like the formula is too stiff and a little bit sticky for that. And it would lift up some of my foundation and just look patchy. So the best way to apply it for me has been to just pick it up on a brush first and then apply it to my face, which that's kind of a pet peeve of mine. I just feel like if something is going to be in stick form, you should be able to swipe it directly on and then blend it out easily with a finger or a brush. But even when I do pick it up on a brush first and then apply it, sometimes I still feel like it picks up a little bit of foundation or just doesn't, doesn't go on the smoothest. So yeah, my expectations for these were really high, but I would say 
This is not my favorite cream blush formula. If anything, I do wish it were in a compact. That's just my personal preference. Uh, but a lot of you have told me that you don't wear foundation and you really like these blushes, so I could see if you tend to go without foundation more often than not. This might be a good blush to wear on just bare skin. I also have tried both of these on the lips because they say they are for lips or cheeks. And I have to say, I really do like these on my lips. I like both shades a lot. Just feels like a nice thin tinted balm. Doesn't have much like thickness or stickiness to it. I love that work shade on the lips for just a peachy nude, very much like a My Lips But Better type of shade. And then the berry shade I think is going to be really fun in the fall and winter. But even still, I don't know, I feel like there are plenty of tinted balms you can get at the drugstore that would look very similar to these. And I don't think you should pick these up just to wear them on your lips, especially because the stick is a little bit chubby to, to just slide it onto your lips. I'm able to do it just fine, I just have to be careful. But if you have small lips like I do, it, it can be kind of hard to keep it within the lines of your lips. Next, I wanted to review the LYS Triple Fix Translucent Setting Powder. I purchased this in the most recent Sephora Spring Sale. So I've had this for a couple months now. I've actually been using it a ton and I already have a noticeable dip in there. So I definitely am ready to share my final thoughts on this. I think this is a really nice powder. I got this in the shade Resilience and they say it's translucent, which is absolutely true. I'm actually able to set my cream cheek products with this and I don't feel like it covers up the color at all. So you can definitely use this as a true like, translucent powder to set uh, you know, cream blushes, bronzers, whatever. So I like that about it. Now, with that being said, you're not really going to get any coverage with this. So that, I mean, it's a translucent powder. So it really doesn't offer any coverage, but it does a good job just setting my makeup, blurring my face a little bit, mattifying. I don't have oily skin, so I can't really say how well this is going to control oil throughout the day. But on me, I would say is it is an effective setting powder. And I am able to use this on my under eyes. I don't mind it on my under eyes. I still prefer a loose setting powder on my under eyes, but this one definitely works. This actually reminds me a lot of the CoverGirl Clean Fresh pressed powder. Just the way it looks, the way it picks up on a brush, the amount of kick up it has, which is not a ton. It really reminds me a lot of the CoverGirl one. Now, I never tried the CoverGirl powder over cream blushes or anything, so I'm not sure how... I, I can't remember how much coverage that powder had or if it was as translucent as this one, just because that's not really something I was looking for at the time. But I am really enjoying this one. The only thing I don't love, actually, is the shape of the pan. I don't mind the triangular packaging in their cream blush, for some reason that doesn't bother me at all. I think because I use a smaller brush in a cream blush, but with powder I often like to use a big brush like this one. But you can see my brush is bigger than this like more narrow part up here. So it's a little bit harder to get product on the brush as opposed to just your standard circle compact, which this brush normally would fit in. But otherwise, I've really been enjoying this, and I, I don't think you can go wrong if you're looking for a good translucent pressed powder. This one is really good. I'm kind of trying to go in order of the way that I applied these products today because I am wearing most of the products. I'm not wearing the Milk Blush Sticks today because I'm actually wearing the Lawless Make Me Blush Velvet Blush in the shade Watermelon, and this is a new shade to this line. I am wearing this today. I don't love the way it looks with my eye look, so I just try to ignore that. It's a little too cool pink for this mostly warm eye look. They also sent some of their watermelon lip products, which I'll get to later in the video, but this is the Watermelon Blush. Retails for $29.00. Pretty bright pink blush. Seems like every brand has to come out with a bright pink <laughs> blush these days. I think this is pretty, but I don't love that it has visible shimmer flecks in it. You can see them in the pan, and I wasn't sure how much they would translate onto the face, but I could still see, like, you know, actual shimmer on my cheeks, which I didn't love. I don't mind a glowy blush, like if it's more of a pearly glow and the shimmer particles are more undetectable. I just don't really like that this has like glitter in it. Like it really does look like almost glitter as opposed to just like a sheen, you know? So I also just don't think you need to spend $29 on a blush. Um, I would say if you're looking for a pink blush like this, go with instead the Koki Soft Gradient Blush in the shade Starcrossed. Now this one you can see, um, it does have a gradient to it, but when you just swirl all throughout the pan, you get a really pretty, like, 
cool Barbie pink and the Koki one doesn't have sparkle to it. So I, I would say I would recommend the Koki one over the Lawless and this one's only like eight bucks. So yeah, I don't love it. I don't hate it. I don't think it's something you need to run out and buy by any means. So all the blushes in this video didn't really get rave reviews from me which I think just goes to show you do not need to spend high-end prices on blush. Now I want to review the two palettes that most recently joined my collection. We have the Nomad Okavango Safari and the ColourPop Sweet As Can Be. Let's start with the ColourPop. The ColourPop one I bought myself, the Nomad one was sent in PR. So the ColourPop Sweet As Can Be, I know this is not a new palette, but they did recently restock this. This is from their Winnie the Pooh collection. I had really wanted this back when it first launched, but I wasn't able to get my hands on it the first time around. It sold out. So when I saw they restocked it, I snatched it right up. So I'll be honest, I probably would not have bought this if it had not been for the theme, but either way, I have been loving this. I think it is such a fun palette, and honestly, ColourPop always impresses me with their eyeshadow formula. Every ColourPop palette I've tried, I've been impressed with the formula. I find it very easy to work with. I think it's one of the best formulas at that affordable price point. The mattes are never patchy. They always, you know, show up true to color. Uh, I like all the shimmers. I really, you know, I have very few complaints about the formula. This palette does have three sequin shades, which I don't love. Those are the mattes like with sparkle, kind of like the way that Lawless blush is. That's how these shimmers are. But with that being said, I still use and like those shades. I just wish they weren't sequined. I wish they were just straight matte. But one of those is this one right here. This is the shade Rumbly, this light, dusty, mauve color, and I love that shade so much. Like, the color of that shadow is perfect for the crease, or just for starting out the crease for me. And I love that that shade is in here because I like blending out like a green or gold look with a really soft rosy color like that. I just feel like it helps everything blend into my skin tone more naturally. And with these colors, you can get a very almost autumnal look, a very olivey look. You can get pretty grungy with this. Or you can stay within just the soft rosy tones down here and just get a very nice everyday neutral look. So I really like the colors that they curated in here. I think it's going to be a lot of fun just year round, even going into the fall. I think I'll be enjoying this a lot. So I've been pleasantly surprised by this one, you know? I mean, I, I figured I would like it because I generally do like ColourPop shadows, but I am really happy I picked this up and it is still available if you are interested. Next for the Nomad Okavango Safari palette. Here is what it looks like on the inside. When I first saw this, I was not sure if I would like it because I am very picky about olive tones and in the past I really have not liked olive greens on my eyes. But I have found that ever since I started uh, coloring my hair red, I don't dye it, I use just a color depositing conditioner, so that's why it's always like a varying shade of red, like sometimes it's bright red if I just did it, or like now it's been a couple weeks since I did it, so you know, it has more of just this like strawberry blonde tint. So to my surprise, I've been finding olive tones more flattering on me these days, and I think this color story makes those grungy olive tones very easy to get into, especially if you're generally intimidated by those types of shades, because first of all, I feel like, I, I, I always feel like Nomad does a great job actually picking the colors for their palettes. Like, it feels like every shade in here was very intentionally chosen. So, of course, you have a lot of greens and olives and browns in here, but I think there's two shades that make this palette way more versatile than if it were just olive shades in here. And I'm wearing both of those shades on my eyes today. Leaping Leechwees, I had to look up the pronunciation of that, and Migrating Zebras. Those two shades right there, I feel like are a little unexpected in this palette. So Leaping Leechwees is a rose gold, and Migrating Zebras is a black and white striped shade. And at first, when I saw that, I was like, oh, like, what, what is that? You know, it just kind of looks like it looks cool in the pan, but what is that going to do on the eyes? Like, how is that going to look? Well, it is the most foiled and beautiful dark silver, almost. Like, it has a, a nice depth to it, but look at how foiled that shade is. So there are both of those, which are kind of unexpected shades, I feel like, to see next to all of these super olivey green colors. But I especially love that there's that silver in there because that opens up so many additional possibilities for color combinations. Instead of just sticking to the greens and like the olivey taupes, you could do such a cool like grungy green and silver look. You could do like a mixed metal look with like the copper and the silver. So today I have, let me try to walk you through what I did today. So I have 
All three of the mattes on the top row on my eyes today, I started out the crease with the shade Towering Giraffes here, which is a great transition color. And then I did Elusive Hippos and Pack of Wild Dogs to deepen up the crease. And then I also have some of this really deep brown shade, Honking Hippos, um, just in the very outer corner to deepen up that area. I actually have three of the shimmers on my eyes. So I have that rose gold shade on like the inner third of my lid. And then I put some of this dark brown shimmer, Mighty Buffaloes, more in like the sort of in the middle to outer third of my lid. And then I tapped some of the silver shade migrating zebras just in the center of my lid which brings like an unexpected coolness to the look that i really like i just think that is such a cool shade so those are the shades i used today i also used a little bit of crash of rhinos just on my lower lash line so i really dipped into a lot of shades today one two three four five six seven eight shades today on my eyes. Really loving the color selection in here. I did another look with this in my recent testing new makeup, Get Ready With Me, and that look I focused in on a lot of the olive greens, and I really like the way that look came out as well. The only thing I've noticed is I do feel like the formula of the shimmers in here is a little bit inconsistent. This olive taupe here, Keystone Termites, normally I like to apply shimmers with my finger, but with that shade I got like immediate hard pan when I picked it up on my finger, and I didn't feel like it applied to my eye very well. It's like all the shadow wanted to stick to my finger and not get on my eye. So that shade specifically, worked better on a brush but all the other shimmers in here seem to apply well with a finger so i don't really know what that's about the time before today that i used this though i did notice that these two deep mattes down here were a little bit patchy uh it, it's almost like it didn't want to stick to certain spots on my eye but then today i did use the dark brown and i didn't have any patchiness so i don't know if that was just user error or what i feel like you know, the formula has been a little inconsistent but all the other mattes are really really blendable and they you know they all show up really you know true to color very pigmented so if you're into these colors i think this is a very well curated color story as long as you can get past those small quirks of the formula i think it's you know, a really good palette and i've had a lot of fun with it so far especially as someone that doesn't normally like olives I, I've been really enjoying this. Okay, I just had to take a break to eat because I got hungry and I still have so much more to get through, but we are we are getting close to the end. So the next product that I wanted to review is another thing from Milk. This is their Kush Clear Brow Gel. And unfortunately, I'm a little unimpressed by this as well. I, yeah, I don't know. I, was, I really had high hopes for Milk's products, but yeah, not sure if they'll be sending me any more PR because I haven't had that much <laughs> great things to say about these things yet. But this is, I don't know, this is just a clear brow gel to me. It doesn't have very strong hold. To, it, to me, it feels similar to like the e.l.f. dual-ended clear brow gel. I think it used to be one dollar. It's probably like three or four dollars now if they are even still selling it. But there are so many other clear brow gels at the drugstore that I think would do just as good of a job as this. It, you know, it gives just a very light amount of hold, but I don't feel like my brows are going to be staying in place. I like to brush my brow hairs up when I go in with brow gel. I don't do like the full, you know, vertical feather brow thing, but you know, I do like for my brow hairs to be a little bit more lifted than they are naturally. And I don't feel like this is keeping my brow hairs in place. Like even over here, some of them are falling. I just don't think it's necessary to spend $22 on this. I think if you're looking for a brow gel that does what this does, you can easily find that for probably under $5. So let's go back to Lawless now. So along with that blush, they also sent me their other like watermelon lip products. So I have their Forget the Filler Overnight Lip Plumping Mask, their Forget the Filler Tinted Balm, and their Forget the Filler Line Smoothing Lip Plumping Gloss. The Overnight Mask, I have had one of these before. The one I had in the past was the Sweet Dreams one, I think is what it was called, and it's, it had like a strawberry kind of scent. So um, this is the same formula as that, and I like it just as much. I really liked that one. This one's great too. It looks pink in there, but it goes on the lips completely clear. And I feel like this does a good job. When I wake up, my lips are, you know, not chapped. I feel like I still have some of this left on my lips when I wake up, which is nice because I know it really stayed on there all night and protected my lips and gave them a lot of good moisture. So I really have no complaints about this. One thing to note though is that this lip mask actually has like a tingle to it, like a minty 
tingle. It feels kind of like a lip plumper, which at first I was worried that would irritate my lips and dry them out, but it really hasn't done that to me. I don't know that this has like a noticeable plumping effect either. It just, you know, it's nice and hydrating and it has a glossy finish as well, if that matters to you. So I enjoy this. I still think nothing beats the Paula's Choice Lip and Body Treatment Balm. It's cheaper than this, comes with more product, and that one just never fails me. But that one is very no frills, you know, it has no scent or anything. This one, you know, it has that fun watermelon scent. It smells really good, actually. So if you're looking for something a little more fun and luxurious, I do think this is a really nice lip mask. Now, the Tinted Balm, this is in the shade Juicy Watermelon. This color, unfortunately, I don't like on me. It's just one of those hot pink shades that even though it is like a blue-based pink, for some reason it makes my teeth look more yellow. You normally hear the opposite. Most people say that blue-based colors make their teeth look whiter, but for me it's the complete opposite. It's usually the warmer shades actually that make my teeth look white. So I just don't find this shade very flattering on me. I'll probably, I actually have a friend who said that she would like to try it, so I'm going to give it to her. But this does also have that same watermelon scent. It smells like a lip smacker. To me, this feels like a grown-up version of a lip smacker. Like, you know, it's got the really pretty packaging. Texture-wise, it feels a lot like a lip smacker. Like, it has that same kind of just like regular chapstick level of thickness, you know? Like, it's not like a super thick buttery lip balm, you know? Like, it just gives a sheer wash of color. Nice product. I don't think it's an absolute must-have, but I think it's nice. And I, I know they do have other colors of this that maybe I would like more. Now, the Forget the Filler Lip Plumping Gloss. This is also in the watermelon shade, and it's a very similar color, actually, to that tinted balm. Like, when you swatch them side by side, they look really similar, but something about this lip gloss, I I don't mind this color on my lips. I think it's just because this color is a little bit more sheer and it's almost a little bit more milky, whereas this goes on a lot brighter. This is a very hyped up gloss, but I have to say I definitely can understand the hype now that I've tried it because this is really a lip gloss formula unlike anything I've ever tried. So I would describe this as a very thick gloss and it really adheres to your lips much more than other lip glosses. Like, it actually has really impressive staying power for a lip gloss, and I feel like as a whole, we, we usually don't talk that much about the staying power of lip glosses because most lip glosses just don't have good staying power. Like, that's just a fact, you know, they wear off easily. But this has seriously impressive staying power. I wasn't even, I, I never even think that much about how long wearing a lip gloss is, but now that I've tried this gloss, I will be paying a lot more attention to the staying power of other lip glosses because this stays on for a long time. Like, the shine really sticks around. The first time I tried this, I applied it, then a little while later, I ate pasta. And after eating the pasta, it was still there. It still looked almost good as new. And then two hours later, I just went about my day, and it was still on my lips. Like, this really sticks around. So for that reason alone, I think it definitely is worth the hype. But if you don't like the feel of a thick gloss on your lips, you're probably not going to like this. Like, you know, lip oils are really big right now, and those are usually like a lot thinner, not nearly as sticky as a gloss. This definitely feels like a pretty thick gloss. And of course, it does have to have some level of stickiness to it in order to stay on your lips. But the nice thing about this is that it doesn't get stringy. As I'm talking and, you know, opening and closing my mouth, I'm not getting those gross, like, gloopy strings of gloss, so that uh, I really appreciate because that's that's so annoying when glosses do that. This is what I have on my lips right now, and I have it over the Koki lip liner in Nude, and I like that that brought down the pinkness of it a little bit. That's the nice thing about a gloss like this, too, is you can, depending on what lip liner you pair it with, it can make it a little bit less of that bubblegummy pink. But I don't even mind this shade just on its own, and I normally am pretty picky with pinks. And I do see where it gets the line smoothing name, because it, it does kind of fill in the lines of your lips. It gives you like a very smooth, glassy look to your lips, and that is partially because it is so thick. So as long as you don't mind the feeling of a thick gloss on your lips, I think this is really nice. And it does come in other shades, so, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit tempted to get some more shades, but I'm probably going to hold off. This next lip product is from Ciate. This is the Bronze Glow Shimmering Lip Oil, and I, I'm i always a little skeptical of lip oils because to me a lot of them are just lip glosses. Now this, let's be real, it is basically a lip gloss, but it does have a slightly more slippy feel to it, so I can see why they call it a lip oil instead. And um, it's mostly clear, it has just a little bit of like a bronze shimmer to it, but it's really comfy on the lips, and I actually feel like this 
stays on the lips longer than a lot of lip oils. Most like true lip oils don't last very long at all because they just sink right in. But this does, you know, the shine does stay on your lips for, you know, maybe like an hour and then you're probably going to want to reapply. But this is just such a comfy, like soft, cushiony formula on my lips. It just feels so nice and I do feel like it gives my lips some good hydration. This is very much a purse lip for me. Like I've been keeping this in my purse and whenever I'm out and about, I will just constantly be reapplying this because it just feels so good and it's so I don't know it just feels very satisfying I think this is only really sold either on Ciate's website or on Nordstrom Rack at least if you're in the US I know I think Ciate is more accessible in the UK but this is definitely a lip oil formula that I can get behind lately I have been trying out the ordinary multi-peptide lash and brow serum this is another thing that I picked up in the Sephora spring sale I got this to replace the Kosas lash serum that I'd been using. I liked that one, but it's very expensive and I didn't like that it left like white flakies on my lashes, but I did get good results with that one. I did notice my lashes got noticeably longer when I was using that, but I was hoping to find something more affordable. This one is like $14, so pretty good price compared to a lot of the others out there. And this one fortunately does not like dry and get weird and flaky and crusty on your lashes. It just basically feels like an, a serum or an oil. It dries down and that's it. You don't notice it or feel it on your lashes after that. It's always hard to tell how much of a difference something like this is making, but I do think it has at least maintained the results I got from the Kosas Brow Gel, which tells me that this is working too. But what I've really noticed since I started using this is that I feel like I've been losing a lot fewer lashes than I used to. I only use this on my lashes, I don't use it in my brows. So it does seem to me like this is helping to just strengthen my lashes. I I did take a before photo and some after photos, but my lashes are so light in color that it's really hard to be able to tell the difference between the befores and the afters. So I kind of just have to go based on what I'm seeing. And I do think that this has made at least a small difference in my lashes. And I do think my lashes are s still just about as long as they were when I was using the Kosas brow uh, or lash serum. So, I mean, if you're looking for a more affordable lash serum or you just want to try one for the first time, I think this would be a good place to start because, you know, I'm, I've been enjoying it and I have heard a lot of other people have gotten good results with this as well. So I have a couple of makeup removing products I wanted to quickly review. One is a cleansing balm. It's the Milk Makeup Hydro Ungrip Makeup Removing Cleansing Balm. And then this one is the iUnique Calendula Complete Cleansing Oil. So I like both of these, but I don't love either one. Neither one of these tops my favorite, which is the Beauty of Josen Cleansing Balm. That's my favorite cleansing balm I've ever tried. Good Molecules is a close second, and then I also love the Paula's Choice Cleansing Balm. All three of those, those are like my top favorites. I don't like either of these as much as those. What I do like about both of these, I actually feel like I feel really similarly about both, so that's why I'm talking about them both at the same time. I do like that both of these emulsify, so you can remove them with water. You don't have to take like a separate cloth and like scrub it off. Once you've massaged this into your skin, if you just start splashing water on your face, it starts to break down and rinse away, and it doesn't leave a film on your skin. So that I really appreciate because I hate cleansing palms that don't do that. The unfortunate thing about these is that they don't remove all my eye makeup. I'm usually left with a little bit of like raccoon eyes or like a little bit of just smearing of eye makeup under my eyes. I don't, and I don't use any waterproof makeup either. I just use regular mascara. So I feel like, you know, regular cleansing balms should be able to remove all of that without any problem. Fortunately, my face cleanser will, you know, get all the remaining makeup off, but I really want my cleansing balm to be the product that removes all my makeup so that my cleanser can then cleanse my face and not have to also have the job of removing makeup. So I will definitely use both of these up. They get the job done, but they're just not as good as my top favorites. The milk one doesn't have much of a noticeable scent. There may be fragrance in there, like just very, very mild fragrance, but nothing that I can detect with my nose. And the Eye Unique one, actually, it smells really good to me. It smells like a spa. Yeah, this one actually has a very soothing scent to me, but it does have a bit of a scent, so just be aware of that. But that's my thoughts on both of those. Don't really highly recommend either, but I think if you see them on like an, a major sale, you know, maybe. But otherwise, you know, there's better ones out there.
Okay, this is the last thing I wanted to talk about. These look so weird. So these are a shampoo and conditioner bar from Kitsch. These are their rice water shampoo and conditioner. So this one is the shampoo, this is the conditioner, and I'll take it out of this little pouch. You can buy this little pouch separately. The little mesh bag here is just to keep it from getting like gloopy. You know when you put a bar of soap in a soap dish, it can get very like soggy. This helps it dry and it will actually help it last longer so it's not like dissolving in your shower. And um, you can just easily hang it up so it, you know, you don't have to worry about setting it down somewhere in your shower. So I do think these little pouches are really helpful. And you can actually leave them in the pouch when you use them because it is like a mesh material. So you just get this wet in the shower and kind of like, you know, lather it up between your hands. And then you can either take what's in your hands and work that through your hair, or you can literally just paint it onto your hair with the pouch on there and that's usually what I do and it works really well. I would say of the two my favorite is the conditioner bar. This one I use a lot more often. The shampoo bar I don't use very often just because I usually just use the same um, anti-dandruff shampoo from Dove just because I kind of need to use that every day. I feel like I'm not really able to give a, much of a review on the shampoo just because I don't use it very often but I will say Nathan uh, has been using this one a lot and he really enjoys it. Now the conditioner bar, I really love. The first time I used this, I wasn't sure if it was going to do anything because as you're applying it to your hair, it doesn't have that like thick feeling of a normal conditioner. It like it does feel slippy in your hair, but it it's very very lightweight. Like it it doesn't feel like a regular conditioner. But to my surprise, this leaves my hair feeling so soft and manageable. And once my hair has dried, it feels a lot just smoother and softer than usual and I also noticed that I have less frizz when I use this conditioner bar versus others and I have really fine hair so I think that's why my hair likes this so much is because it's so lightweight it's great if you have fine or thin hair because it doesn't weigh your hair down but it does just give a really nice like soft feeling to your hair so I have been loving the conditioner bar. I think like even if you don't want to switch to a shampoo bar, like for me, I do need to use a medicated shampoo. So I don't think I'm the best target for a shampoo bar, but the conditioner bar has been amazing. Like this is definitely something I would repurchase. This is one of my favorite conditioners I've ever tried. So amazing, really happy to have tried that. Um, these were both sent in PR from Kitsch and just wanted to give that a shout out because I do get a lot of questions about, you know, solid shampoos and conditioners. And I think these, you know, these seem like a really good place to start. And there is actually a 20% off code. It's not an affiliate code or anything. It's just Kitsch20, and that will get you 20% off your order on their website. Uh, and these also are sold at Ulta. But yeah, I just wanted to give you guys my updated thoughts on some new things that I've been trying. I hope it helped you out. Thank you guys so much for hanging out today. If you had fun, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I do also have a Patreon and a channel membership if you'd like to support my channel further. But otherwise, I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day, and I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye!